Hi folks, let's talk a little bit about the role of human resources, the human resources group in a unionized environment. So first of all, human resources is one of the first groups that management would turn to if they got a grievance and they needed some help uh, understanding the collective labor agreement or they just wanted to discuss it with them. So in the human resources department, they have somebody who's ultimately very familiar with the collective labor agreement and who has probably seen many, many grievances and that's called a labor relations specialist. And this person is part of the HR department and really supports management. HR also has to make sure that all of the policies that they set are consistent with the collective labor agreement and they don't compete with it. So in other words, I can't have policies that are being written by HR that contravene or aren't, uh, aren't, su aren't supporting the existing collective labor agreement which both management and the union have signed. I need to make sure if I'm in HR as well that I also include the union if I'm trying to formulate any new policies or procedures. So in other words, I have to make sure that the union is going to accept the policies or procedures that I'm writing for my unionized employees. Um, so I just need to make sure that the union supports that. So normally, somebody in the HR department would have to remember if they're formulating policies and procedures for unionized staff to involve the union in that process. The Human Resources Department will also, also centralize record keeping, so they'll keep all the files and all the records of all the union employees, but they will also standardize HR decision making. So they have to make sure that um, when they're hearing grievances, uh, when they're advising management on the position they should take in the event that one of their employees files a grievance, they need to make sure that they're giving consistent information when they're looking at grievances or complaints or concerns uh, that employees have expressed um, just to make sure that they're all being handled the same way. HR also has to represent management in the collective bargaining process. So when the collective labor agreement has expired, management uh, has to be represented by HR in that collective bargaining process. And also HR would receive and handle grievances that are related to the contract that are sent to them by the union. So the union is supporting the employee who filed the grievance and HR is handling the grievance along with managers. Um, uh, of the employees who have filed the grievance. So again, HR will represent management and the union will represent the employee. Now, if we have a look at the role of the supervisor, so say for example, I'm a unionized employee, okay, my supervisor has to make sure, even though he may be non-union, that he follows the rules in the collective labor agreement. Uh, he has to make sure that uh, if documentation needs to be provided, uh, perhaps to an arbitrator, if the, if the issue, the grievance that I, I submitted couldn't be resolved by the union and the labor relations specialist and senior management, then it needs to go to arbitration and some documentation will be required at that stage. And my supervisor also has to be prepared to participate in the grievance um, uh, cases of employees who report to them. So again, they may be required to uh, come forward as a witness or tell their side of the story uh, to senior management or if it has to go to arbitration to an arbitrator. Now, union stewards are people who also have a role because they're the first line of defense uh, for uh, union workers. So every unionized workforce has a group of people who are called union, each of them called a union steward, who represents the interests of that group. It's very much like, uh, say for example, in a high school where you have a class, you also have a class rep. Well, that class rep would represent the student's interest in that particular student group. Well, we have a union steward who represents our interests as employees within our little group. Okay, so they have to make sure that they represent us and they hear any concerns that we have and they understand how we're interpreting the agreement and if they don't agree with our interpretation, they have to educate us and train us on how we should be reading that collective labor agreement. So this concludes some of the roles of supervisor, union steward, and HR in the unionized environment.